Hi everyone, this is Janetska coming at you with another video. This one is kind of a rumble video. Uh, I have a nice cup of tea right here because I'm parched. So, cheers. That's good stuff. I love tea. Uh, milk tea. Anyway, if you're wondering why I got this cup, I actually got it at a place we have. It's a um, coffee branch. Sorry, it's a coffee chain. And I got it at one of the branches that we have around town. I think altogether I've been told they have like 12 branches all over town and this place is called Brown. It's very famous and um, basically like you have, have a, a reward card and you get so many points like you get I think you get a point for every time you have something to drink uh, and so I gathered the amount of points necessary and I got my cup I also got another cup from the same uh, the same coffee place and it's a big white one and I will probably show it to you in another video but uh, that's it oh. so today I decided to come at you with a little rant and also I wanted to show you something I made after the uh, the idea shown in one of Hermetic Kitten's videos where she was showing her planner and I thought this is great, this is exactly what I need so I went to the local stationery shop which is also a chain, we have a few of those they're called IBC and they are the most popular stationery shop here in town. Uh, it stands for International Book Center. And I saw this little baby right here. And all you had at the front is uh, this drawing. And this is actually cut out. So when you open it, you are when you open it you get this at the front which is very cute and you have the obligatory sentence in English I hope you happy in the life <laughs> I love, I love Cambodian English um, it reminds me of those videos I used to watch. I think it's the Japan channel, and they uh, they regularly have those snippets of Japan glitch. Well, Cambo glitch is not that much different. So uh, uh, I think it's a bit better though. It's a bit better than Chap English. Anyway, I digress. I told you this was going to be a ramble video. So, um, so I took this one because I wanted a different... different parts. I needed different parts and this is... those pages are coloured, as you can see. It's bloody awesome. 
and I got a bunch of stickers that I used and this is actually nail polish this is also nail polish and the stars are made with like a silver marker those are stickers this is glittery nail polish JD, Vinetchka Dabrowski, that's me. Idea book. This is. This was like a um, transfer. I'm not sure how you call those things. They're like stickers. They're like tattoos for paper. But the problem was that mine were so old, uh, they didn't take very well so I had to go over that shit with a um, sharpie or calligraphy pen and I went over this one as well uh, and this is the back of it so this was also like a transfer thingy this is what you had at the back, I just colored it. Sticker, this is, um, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what this is. But it was cute. A friend gave this to me and I thought it was cute. So I glued it on the yeah, notebook. This is also a sticker because why the fuck not? And, uh, and in the upside, I wrote my motto, which is enlighten, empower, and entertain, which is I tr what I try to do in my videos. Uh, so the red part is for video ideas and I already filled a few pages with video ideas some of them have been done so I put a tick next to them this column is for accessories that I might need and the blue part I haven't used it that much, but it's for writing ideas. Basically, like if I have ideas for poems or um, short stories, things like that. Uh, the pink part is for dreams. I don't know, if anything that strikes my, my attention as an artist. And I started like drawing, um, that's not drawing, um, writing the names of different um, artists that have inspired me um, across the years. And the last part, the green part, is for works, all, all the things I've done, basically, what it is, or what they are, and the date I finished them, so the date I completed them. And most of those are videos, but this is great, because... Um, it helps me keep track of the things I'm on top of and the things I need to get done. And also I've noticed like since the beginning of the year I've been uh, quite busy making videos and such and I'm very happy about that because last year I did maybe like between 30 and 40 things. Like there were months where I didn't do anything because I was too caught up with work. So um, at least this 
gives me a visual of where I'm at. And it's great. So thank you so much, Kiki, for the inspiration. Cheers. I look like a rapper. I don't know if you noticed. This and this were purchased in a shop called Classic, which is not far from where I live. I know that's a pretty cool stuff, but it's mainly for boys. But I don't give a fuck. And this. Uh, okay, this I think I got it at the Russian market, which is one of the most popular markets. And um, it's quite, it's a very touristic -y. and it's also very hot. <laughs> it's a very hot market, like the ceilings are really low. And uh, I mean, the um, shop tenants have fans, but. Uh, it does get pretty warm, especially in the afternoon. So the best time, if you are uh, if you are ever visiting Phnom Penh, would be to go early in the morning because I think they open at uh, around seven, maybe even before that, because they're quite. Um, busy early in the morning and I totally saw uh, Korean rappers Doki wearing something strangely uh, strangely similar to this I don't want to say it was the same but it was fucking the same okay and uh, he was wearing that in his latest video which is called Future Flame and I fucking love Korean rap, uh, Korean hip hop, uh, Korean R&B, and Koreans. I I listen to a lot of Korean music. Okay. I wanted to make a separate video for this, but since we are on the subject, um, there was a time in my life when I was. Like, I had a rough time. I had a fucking rough time, you know. And um, the one thing that really helped me was K pop. That's right. And now I see some people who comment on ASMR videos also like K-pop or Korean music. So I'm thinking we're on to something. Yeah, there's a pattern. There's something. There is a connection. That's what I'm trying to say. So uh, I got into Korean music about five years ago when I moved to Cambodia. And during that time in my life, I, like, the thing that was giving me life and energy was Korean pop. Like, just the fact that it made me want to dance and move around, and it was just bringing me so much joy. Like, I know it sounds really silly, but... And then... Through that, I discovered other artists that are unrelated to K-pop. They, they're more like um, soul, R&B, hip hop. I listen to a lot of hip hop, Korean hip hop. Like, but uh, if you have any suggestions for me, please 
uh, leave them in the comments because I would be delighted to discover an artist that I've never heard of before. I used to watch a lot of Korean TV back when I had a TV that actually worked. I, the, the only thing I was watching was Korean dramas and Korean TV shows. For real. And I don't even speak Korean. You know? Because, um... Oh my god, I said this was going to be a quick video and I'm already on like 15 minutes. Cray cray. Um, because Cambodian music, I mean, there are a few, um, I just want to do that. There are a few uh, rappers and there are a few bands, like rock bands and metal bands as well. But um, they sing in English. Most of the time. Um, Cambodian pop music. If you ask for my personal opinion, Cambodian pop music copies a lot. And when I say copy, they actually copy. <laughs> like, I'm not shitting you. They, they take like one popular song like, give me to me, I'm worth it, that one, they take that, they remove the, uh, the voice, they remove the vocals, and they put my vocals on it, and it sounds exactly as shitty as you think it is, <laughs> alright, so we have a lot of that going around, um, um, they copy the style of um, Chinese songs, Thai songs, Korean songs. They try to put more, uh, like, more dancers in their thing. But, um, like, those dancers have very little energy. <laughs> It's like you have this this music that's like banging, and then those guys are like, you know, you feel like shaking them up a bit. And uh, the other thing with uh, Cambodian pop music is that uh, they we all end up sounding and looking very similar in the end uh, like the videos if you ever happen to watch a uh, Khmer pop music video uh, it's always like the girls are really nice like if it's a if it's a girl singer like the girls are really nice but uh, they have those boyfriends Can you hear that? They have these boyfriends that are complete assholes and they lie, they cheat, they drink, they gamble all at once, you know. And uh, eventually, in the end, someone dies. And it's the same thing for the boys. I mean, the boys, like the male singers, they're all so good and honest and faithful. But the girls are bitches, you know, like, what the fuck. And if they're lucky, they both die and end this life of suffering. Because we are Buddhists up in this bitch. So that's what it's all about. And the music is, like, very, um, sweet. Very, um. Yeah, just very 
sweet and uh, the Cambodian language is also kind of hard but I think I will make a video, a separate video about that but the Cambodian language is kind of hard and so um, sometimes maybe it's not the best for uh, singing I don't know, like to me English is the best language for anything that's musical English is the best seriously but I digress yet again I don't know, maybe I don't understand Cambodian music because I wasn't brought up here it's so different from what you hear as a Westerner every day. You know, obviously, it's more orient, it's more yeah, Oriental, Eastern, or whatever you want to call it. Um, the voices are really high pitched sometimes, so it sounds a bit. It's reminiscent of Indian music, of Indian singing, maybe. I mean, that's just that's just my opinion. Anyway, and uh, and so even if I don't speak Korean, like I really like the way. Uh, The, the melodies and the flow of Korean music even if when Korean people speak on the street you you think that they're having an argument you know I find it rather funny but like with the intonations and stuff sometimes they sound like they're arguing when they are not but in the songs it's completely different it's rather smooth you know, anyway, that, yeah. That's, once again, my personal opinion. Anyway. What I wanted to talk about today, actually, was pride. And, um, because I've been thinking about this why do people feel a sense of pride? Um, I get it that you can be proud of yourself and proud of your achievements uh, I get that all the times that I felt a sense of pride and smugness Immediately after that, I was put back into my place, basically. So I try not to be arsy anymore about the things that I can do, or, you know. Or, um, not arsy, but not feel like it's actually a big thing, you know, so I can do this, so what, you know. Other people can do it better than I do. Than I can, or uh, I can do this. Other people cannot do it, but they can do other things that I can't do. So there's no no need to feel like a sense of superiority, or you know, uh, I used to feel pride. Uh, I remember this conversation I had with another kid, I was like 11, and I said, I'm proud of um, coming from the country I come from, which now you would never catch me saying that. that I feel, I, I do not feel 
any sense of national pride anymore. That was like that was a phase. Okay, that was a phase. Uh, I'm over it. Uh, you, you will not catch me saying that anytime soon. So, and I don't understand because patriotism to me is connected with, or not connected, but like there's a very fine line between patriotism and chauvinism and then you fall into the extremes you know so uh, and why do you feel proud of having been born in one particular country um, in comparison to another one you know this 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 had nothing to do with you this is where your parents fucked Okay, probably. So that's that's all. That's why you're here. There's no like you didn't decide by yourself, you know. So it's like being proud of having brown eyes, you know. It's You had no control over that. That's not your achievement. All right. You, you get what I mean. The other thing is being proud of someone else's achievements. Like, I never understand. I, I cannot comprehend this, the phrase, I I'm proud of you. What does that mean? Like, why are you, why do you feel a sense of entitlement over something that someone else has done? Why? And also, they don't need your approval. They don't need you to um, validate that what they have done is right. If they already know. Maybe that would work for children because they, they, they are in search of that recognition. But seriously? What is it all about? Um, there are two words in French for Pride. One is positive and one is negative to simplify. Uh, and I don't think in the other languages that I know, I don't think uh, there is this difference. And I don't know why French people decided to mark that difference. It's also quite interesting, you know. But basically they translate as pride, and pride in English can be positive or negative uh, according to the context. So um, I'm quickly going to finish because I've been rambling on for quite a bit. But, um, like, what do you think about this notion of pride? And what do you think about the notion of ego entering in that equation? This sounds so pompous. Like, I'm a philosopher, bitches. But, um... Uh, yeah, I just wanted to rant about it because I really don't understand it anymore. So I wanted to know what you guys think about it. Leave me a comment or even better, you can reply with a video. That would be cool to watch. Alright. <laughs>